Hey there home baker, welcome to this video where we are talking about how to start your home bakery business and how to turn your passion for home baking into a legit business that actually can become your part-time or even full-time job where it completely replaces your job that you have right now. Now in a home bakery business there are three phases to becoming full-time. There's the start out phase where you're just starting with a side hustle, then there's part time and then there's full time. I'm not going to get into phase two and three right now because then you're just going to be overwhelmed. Okay, and that's not what we want. We want you to start your business as soon as possible and I'm going to simplify things for you as much as possible so that you feel the confidence and feel more comfortable to get started. Since 2018, I've been helping home bakers just like you to start their home bakery businesses with a consistent flow of orders and a stable income. And I often see home bakers make the same mistakes over and over again when they start their businesses. So I'm going to speak about how to start your business from that point of view, what not to do and what you should be doing instead. Mistake number one that home bakers make when they start their business is to quit their day job. Please don't do that because when you do that, you are putting so much pressure on your business to succeed immediately. Realistically speaking, in all other industries, it takes about two years for a business to start making profit. Now, in a home bakery, it doesn't take that long at all. You can start making profit very early on, but it's not going to be a full salary immediately, especially if you want to do this so it has sustainable success and not just one huge successful month and then everything just crashes, right? We want to build a sustainably successful business. So don't quit your day job just yet. It provides so much security and stability for your family to have that recurring income every month from your day job. How it typically works in a home bakery is you start small. You keep your day job, you bake for just one day per week. Start baking for Fridays. You can start very small with just one dozen items and then you can grow that over time. Eventually you'll be baking two dozen items for every Friday and then three dozen and then four dozen. Then you'll start baking for Saturdays as well. And when you get to a point where your weekends are fully booked, then you can start looking into decreasing your hours at your day job and going part-time so that you then have more time available to devote to your baking business, to push into your baking business, to invest in it so that you can start getting more clients, maybe look into getting wholesale clients and things like that. But this process does not take a month. You can think more about like six months or so, okay, for it to start replacing a part-time income for you. And another mistake that I see young bakers make in this area is to have the complete opposite perspective where they think I need to build up a full-time home bakery while I still have a full-time day job. That's not the solution either. Two full-time jobs require two people and you are just one person. You're going to burn yourself out completely. Your relationships and your life are going to start falling apart. It's so not worth it. So don't do that to yourself. You can do a side hustle where you're baking for weekends. You can do that to your max capacity while still having a day job, a full-time day job. But then when your weekends are fully booked, then it's time to start letting go of your current reality, which is your current day job, and then start investing that time into your baking business. So instead of trying to create a full-time home bakery business while still working at a full-time day job, know when it is time to start reducing your hours at work so that you have more time available to work on your baking business and still have a life and not burn out. Mistake number two in starting a business is thinking that you need all kinds of fancy catering and baking equipment or a very large kitchen and loads of space before you can start a home bakery business. We think this because we see bakers on Instagram, right? And they have like three kitchen aids and we think we need the same stuff. We need those 30 spatulas and we need all that space and two giant ovens before we can start a baking business. So not the case at all. I started in a three square meter kitchen. That's nine square feet very very small i baked full time out of that for a year and a half where there's a will there's a way you can make this work be resourceful with what you have and if you don't have it then ask a friend if you can borrow it from them during the first year in my business i actually drove to my husband then he was just my boyfriend but i drove to his student house every thursday night after work and i baked everything there because i didn't have a reliable oven in the student house where i was staying so i would drive to his house bake everything there and then drive home and decorate everything at my own student house i borrowed a hand mixer from a friend i borrowed two mixing bowls from someone else you can make this work use what you have resourcefulness matters so much more than resources 
If you're wondering what you really, really need, like what's essential in terms of tools and so forth to start a baking business, I've written a blog post for you. The link is in the description below this video where I list out all the things that you actually really need to start a home bakery business. You'll see that it's not much at all. Go check that out. Mistake number three is to buy heaps of ingredients in bulk and to buy packaging in advance. Don't make this mistake, please don't. In the beginning, your business doesn't have a lot of cash flow, right? You don't have a lot of money, there isn't a lot of profit coming in yet, so you need to be very wise and very frugal with where and how you spend your money. You don't need heaps of packaging. Buy that kind of stuff on a week to week basis. Same with ingredients, buy them as you need them. Down the line, there's definitely room to buy things in bulk. I've got a video as well about that. There's the, the link is in the description about how to source cheaper ingredients for your home bakery. But this is not what you need to worry about in, in the first month when you start your business. That comes later down the line where it becomes worth it and you know you're gonna get heaps of orders and you will definitely use all of those ingredients that you buy. The danger with buying ingredients in bulk right at the beginning is that you can't guarantee that you are going to have orders that use those specific ingredients and then they will just end up going to waste. So don't do that to yourself. Don't spend your money on those kinds of things. Buy packaging and ingredients on a week to week basis. Your packaging also really doesn't have to cost a fortune. There are ways that you can DIY your packaging. I've been doing that for years and it saves me loads of money. Because if you print custom boxes, you probably need to print at least a couple of thousand. In my place where I live in Cape Town, you have to print at least 3,000 boxes. And where are you gonna find space for something like that? And it's a huge, huge expense right at the beginning of your business. So I buy boxes as I need them and then I just splatter them with gold paint. I've got a video tutorial about that as well. You can DIY your packaging to make it look more special. Mistake number four when starting a business is to wing it with your pricing. And by that I mean that you look at what everyone else is charging and then you think that's what I should be charging. Or you ask your family and friends what is a fair price to charge. Or you go on your own feelings and think well I feel that this is about as much as I would be willing to pay for something. Don't do this. Please don't do this. Your pricing is not an afterthought. Your pricing is essential for the success of your business because that is where the money is made. If you don't price correctly, you will end up working yourself to death for peanuts and burn out completely along the way. And you will eventually need to close your business if you don't price properly. So please don't make light of this. You have to price properly. Your pricing needs to be based on proper, proper math but it's not complicated to do that. I've got a free pricing calculator to help you and make your life easier. The link to that is below this video. You can get the free pricing calculator in my free resource library for home bakers. There's loads of resources there to help you out. And the free pricing calculator is amazing. You just type in your information, cost of your ingredients, the time that you spend and so forth. And then it pops out the recommended selling price for you. It does all the complicated math for you. It's so essential in your business to price correctly. Okay, so go download that free pricing calculator. Mistake number five is to base your home bakery menu on what seems popular to you in your local community and on social media. This is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. If you base your entire business on what other people are making, then your business will completely disappear in the crowd. And you don't want that, right? You want your business to stand out. If you want your business to stand out and attract customers, you need to find a niche for your home bakery right from the very start. And when I say niche, I don't mean restriction. They are two completely different things. Restriction or specialization is about, I just bake cupcakes or I just bake brownies. That is not proper niching. Niching is about solving a problem for customers related to baked goods that other bakers in your area aren't solving for them yet. You need to basically look for the gaps in the market that other home bakers aren't fulfilling yet. And another important thing, don't just look at the problems that are in your area related to baked goods, but you also need to consider what you actually love to bake. You need to bake things that are in line with who you are and what you're passionate about because you're going to be baking hundreds, in fact, thousands of those things. So you better be picking things to bake that you actually love making and feel confident in. I've got a free guide to help you find the perfect niche for your home bakery business so that you will stand out and attract customers. 
Once again, the link to join the free resource library is below this video and you will find that guide, that free guide on how to find the perfect niche for your business in the library. Mistake number six, and this is a personal one, it's gonna sting a bit, but I have to be honest with you because I want you to succeed, okay? So here's some tough love. Mistake number six is naming your business after yourself. Now, I did the same thing, so I'm not judging, okay? But if you want your business to attract your ideal customers and to stand out among all the other competition out there, then you need to not name your business after yourself, but actually name it according to your niche. Remember in the previous step, you needed to define your niche and to base your whole home bakery, your menu, your business name, all of that stuff needs to be based on your niche so that it attracts your ideal customer. I've made a video about how to create the perfect business name and what mistakes to avoid. The link to that is below this video. Once you've watched that video about how to create the perfect business name for your home bakery business, then you can very easily create your logo and your business cards on Canva. Canva is a free online program that is super user friendly, very easy to use, and you can in no time at all create beautiful professional looking graphics. You don't need to pay thousands for a graphic designer to create this super professional logo. It's not necessary. You can very easily create something on Canva and they've got amazing templates as well for things like business cards, etc. So that will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. Mistake number seven is more of a mental issue, but it's regarding the whole licensing process of your home bakery. Often home bakers get so freaked out by this idea that they just procrastinate and procrastinate starting their businesses because they are so scared that they'll mess up the licensing process or that they won't get approved and they won't be able then to legally bake from home. But I really want to put you at ease here. It's not such a big deal. It's a very rational process. They won't look at you and say, well, I don't like you, so you're not getting your license. They look for specific criteria. I've written a blog post about that as well, what they typically look out for. But note, it is a bit different in every country, so you will need to do your research. Just go to your local authorities and ask them. You know, this is what you want to do. You want to start a home bakery business. What can you do? what can you schedule an appointment for the health inspector to come inspect your home and so forth you know set up that meeting get things going you won't know unless you go ask and find out but yes there's a blog post that i've written about the process that link is below this video as well now sometimes it might happen that a home bakery business or a cottage food business is against the law in your country or in your state or in your city those three have their own different rules often it's not just one rule for the whole country or one rule for the whole state. So you will need to go and just ask them. If it is legal, be specific in how you explain to them. Often they will think if you say cottage food business that you are planning to work with meat and all kinds of things like that, which is not the case with a home bakery at all. Okay, so be clear in how you explain to them. This is a baking business. There is no meat involved of any kind so that they know, okay, there's less risk of contamination or infection or food poisoning, etc. And if you live in the USA, I have very good news for you because there's this institute called the Institute for Justice where they are super passionate about helping cottage food businesses, home-based food businesses to be legal. They are busy changing the laws of every state and every city. They basically have a whole team of lawyers that advocate for change in this area because no one ever got sick from a homemade cookie or donut, right? It's ridiculous that there are so many restrictions on home bakers. So if you live in the USA and you want to see the cottage food laws changed in your state or in your city, go check out the interview I did with Katie. The link is below this video. She managed, managed to change the laws in her state and in her city with the help of the Institute for Justice. Um, that story will be incredibly inspiring to you and you will get so many helpful tips on what to do next so that home-based food businesses are legalized in your city and in your state. Mistake number eight that home bakers make when starting their businesses is to wait to feel ready or to feel like they have enough knowledge or enough experience or to feel more confident. Often they will go through the process of finding their niche, figuring out a business name, making their logo and their business cards and all of those practical things, but then they don't actually start their business because they just don't feel ready. They don't feel qualified enough or experienced enough to charge people for their baking. Often they will feel scared and think that because they feel scared, it's this sign that they are not supposed to start a home bakery business. 
but this is so not the case at all. I promise you every single business owner who has started a business feels scared. Even after they start their business, they still feel scared. Every time I bake for clients, I still feel scared. Even after like 10 plus years of baking for people, fear is not a sign that you're not supposed to do this. Fear is just a sign that you are human. It's actually a really good thing to be scared. It just means that your brain is doing its job <laughs> of trying to protect you from things that are unknown and unsure. You will always be afraid of things that are unknown and unsure in your future, but that doesn't mean you're not supposed to do them. Think about the most meaningful and valuable things in your life. For example, having kids or marrying someone or putting yourself out there and applying for a job. Often the most valuable and meaningful things in your life are things that you did even though you felt scared, right? Something that's really helped me in overcoming my fear when starting a business or doing something new is to think of what I actually want. I remember this is one of the most amazing things that ever happened to me in my life. Before I started my baking business, I had a conversation with a dear friend and she told me, Aurelia, for a moment, forget what everyone expects you to do. Forget what you feel you are supposed to do. What do you actually want? What do you want to do? What do you want? And it was the first time in my life that someone ever asked me that. I was always just so concerned about what other people kind of told me I'm supposed to do or what I, I thought and assumed I was supposed to do. But then when I could finally say it out loud, like I want to bake, I want to have a baking business, I want to do this for a living. Then it helped me to start understanding that if I want to get there, that's the thing that I want, right? I need to start making decisions according to that. Because if I'm just going to keep listening to my fear, I'm going to be the, in the exact same spot a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. And then one day I'm going to be 80 lying on my bed and regret not giving this a go. I'm going to regret not starting a business. I'm going to regret not doing something that I'm super, super passionate about and good at, like baking. If you've watched this far in the video, you know that you're a good baker. People have told you that over and over again. And you know that you are passionate about this. You owe it to yourself to acknowledge that and to make decisions according to that. Be honest with yourself for a moment. What do you really want? Do you want to bake? Then start your baking business. It's simple as that. So instead of waiting and waiting and waiting to feel ready or to feel more confident, realize that you're never going to feel those things. You will never feel ready. You'll be waiting for the rest of your life. Rather, make decisions according to where you want to be and then your life will start changing right in front of your eyes. Great, so now that you know how to start your home bakery business this year, to stop putting it off but to start getting that ball rolling, remember your next three steps. First step is to download the free pricing calculator, join the library, the link is below this video, and then also the guide to find the perfect niche for your business is also in the library. You can download both of those there. And then your third step is to pick the perfect business name for your home bakery that actually attracts your ideal customers. And you can watch that in this video on your screen. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.